All right. Good morning, everyone. Welcome. So delighted to see everybody here today. My name is Maureen Conway. I'm a vice president at the Aspen Institute and executive director of the Institute's Economic Opportunities Program. And I am so thrilled to welcome everybody to our second Employee Ownership Ideas Forum. Uh, the Employee Ownership Ideas Forum is co-sponsored by co-hosted by the Aspen Institute's Economic Opportunities Program and the Rutgers Institute for the Study of Ownership and Profit Sharing. Um, and we're very grateful to the Ford Foundation, Prudential Financial, and J.P. Morgan Chase for their support of this forum. Uh, we also want to thank Senator Jean Shaheen and her staff, especially Riley Burke, who met us very early this morning, for hosting us here at the Capitol and providing us with this lovely space. Uh, before I go further, I also want to hopefully welcome our virtual audience uh, and provide a few notes for virtual participation. So all attendees are muted. We welcome your questions. Please use the Q&A box on the screen. Uh, we have a couple of colleagues here in the room who will share questions on your behalf. Um, we also know many people in our virtual audience are experts in this field. Please share your ideas, examples, resources, experiences related to today's topics um, and introduce yourself to uh, other folks in the virtual space. Uh, and you can click the captions button to follow the conversation uh, using closed captions if you would like to do that. Uh, we also encourage you to post about this conversation. This goes for those of you here in the room too. Uh, our preferred social, our, our hashtag for whatever your preferred social media platform is talk ownership. If you have any technical issues, you can put a note in the chat or email us at eop.program at aspeninstitute.org. This forum is being recorded and will be shared via email and posted on our website. I should also note, uh, according to our legal department, that as a 501c3 nonprofit organization, the Aspen Institute is nonpartisan and does not endorse, support, or oppose political candidates or parties. I mention that because we are delighted that several elected officials will be participating in today's event uh, from state legislatures as well as from the US Congress, but they are attending and speaking in their official capacity and not as political candidates. Further, the views and opinions of our guests and speakers do not necessarily reflect those of the Aspen Institute. Okay, now that I've gotten all those announcements out of the way. <laughs> Uh, I really want to thank the team that put together this event. Uh, this event, these events take a lot of work. The Rutgers team has been incredible partners. Um, and so I just wanted to name a few people who have been just on countless phone calls to design the agenda, figure out speakers, coordinate logistics, and manage the many, many, many details that it takes to put on an event like this. Uh, from the Aspen Institute team, I especially want to thank uh, Matt Helmer, Merritt Steuben, Tony Mastria, Nora Heffernan, Maxwell Johnson, Francis Omodovar, and Joy Moore. And from the Rutgers team, I want to thank Jack Moriarty, Adria Scharf, Melissa Hoover, Chris Michaels, and Bethany Dennis. And I particularly want to thank uh, my friend and colleague, Joseph Blasey, who unfortunately is not able to join us today due to a family issue, but who, as many of you know, has really devoted his life to employee ownership. Um, uh, he's really built an incredible community of scholars and practitioners who, who come together, um, many of whom are here in the room, many of whom wouldn't be doing the work that they do without Joseph's influence. Um, so we're really grateful to all Joseph has, has brought to the field of employee ownership. He certainly sends his regrets, and I'm sure you all join me in wishing him and his family well at this time. Um, I also want to say a particular thank you to Dean Adrian Eaton, who will be stepping in for Joseph in parts of our agenda. We're really delighted that you are here and participating. The theme of this year's employee ownership event is employee ownership on the ground. And we'll be highlighting a variety of ex um, exciting work in the employee ownership field that is going on all across the country. We'll hear from leaders from employee ownership companies companies, uh, leaders in employee ownership finance, policy, philanthropy, advocacy, and much more. Today we're going to explore state policy, the impact of employee ownership in rural areas, how employee ownership can support supply chain resiliency and the development of strategic industries um, in our supply chain, and of course, We'll talk about federal policy, because here we are. Uh, so we'll welcome Jim Bonham, president and CEO of the ESOP Association, to provide a federal policy update. And I will be moderating a panel of representatives of different federal agencies uh, later this afternoon, so we can hear about their role in this work. 
So we're very excited about that. We're also expecting Congressman Bouchon from Indiana, Senator Van Holland of Maryland, and Senator Sanders of Vermont to stop by. Um, and then Sarah Kay from Prudential Financial will close out our day today. Tomorrow, we will be continuing the forum at our Aspen Institute DC offices with more speakers and innovations and ideas. So um, I hope everybody will join us from that. And then Thursday, uh, we'll be finishing our event with a private discussion, actually, um, hosted by colleagues from Employee Ownership Plus Workplace Democracy, Project Equity, and Purpose to Own for an invitation-only discussion on strengthening and expanding the field of purpose trust ownership, which is an interesting emerging area that I hope we'll be talking more about in subsequent forums. So it's going to be an action-packed and inspirational couple of days considering the variety of work that is happening now. I am thrilled that we will begin this with uh, opening remarks from both President Jonathan Holloway from Rutgers University and President Dan Porterfield from the Aspen Institute, who will be kicking off our, our discussions today. And so to get started, it is my great pleasure and privilege to introduce Dan Porterfield. Dan has held many prestigious positions and has had an impact in a variety of areas of work, and I encourage you to look at his illustrious accomplishments in the bio on our website. Um, but what the website doesn't exactly convey and what I most really respect and appreciate about Dan is his incredible commitment to human dignity and economic inclusion and his really genuine passion to advance a more free, more just, and more equitable society. He leads with values and heart um, that has been evident to us at the Aspen Institute from day one. Um, and he's just been incredibly supportive of the work we do in the Economic Opportunities Program and advancing our job quality work, this work on employee ownership, and so many other areas. So Dan, thank you, thank you so much for joining us today. Let me turn it over to you. Thank you, Maureen. That was a lovely introduction. I should say in the spirit of Maureen's comments that my views do not represent the views of the Aspen Institute. <laughs> um, it's pretty cool being introduced by Maureen. It's a little bit like, uh, I don't know, she, I think Maureen is the, the Don Staley of the economic opportunity <laughs> movement. Or maybe undefeated Don Staley is the Maureen Conway of college basketball. Um, so you do amazing things. Thank you so much. And also, it's really great to be working with Rutgers. The impacts that Rutgers makes across the landscape are profound, and Jonathan in particular. Uh, Jonathan and I are teaming up with some other presidents on another project called the American Talent Initiative, whose goal is to increase dramatically the number of low and moderate income students attending the top institutions in the country, like Rutgers. And among the, all the different presidents of Ivy League institutions, of public flagship institutions, of highly selective non you know, uh, uh, liberal arts colleges and mid-sized private colleges. Jonathan's one of the leaders in this effort, and Rutgers is setting the standard, not because it's new work for Rutgers, but because it's enduring work for Rutgers. It shows the power of, of possibility, and that's what this is about, too, the power of investing in people. Um, I think many of you know the Aspen Institute. We are a global convening and leadership organization whose purpose is to ignite human potential for understanding and new possibilities for a better world, a more free, just, and equitable world. We work in lots of ways and places, but it's always, as Maureen said, about bringing people together to find the new solution that can make progress towards a better future for all of us. And um, this employee ownership idea is such a promising concept to create an economy where all who work can share in the prosperity that they help to create with their work. Um, that's like part of the moral eminence of it all, is that it's about people's contribution to then their lives, others' lives, companies that they're a part of, and a better economy. Um, it's, a, it's a great solution, but it's more than a great solution. It, 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 it embodies the values that you want to see in a just economy and in a, in a democratic capitalist system. Um, and for all those reasons, again, we're super excited to partner with the Rutgers Institute for the Study of Employee Ownership and Profit Sharing. And we're, I'm so sorry Joseph's not here today to have a chance to meet him. Uh, if you're tuning in now or later, Joseph, uh, you, <laughs> you have a long shadow. It's influencing many, many, many people. So uh, thank you for your career of work uh, and for the future. 
This is the second time we've hosted the Employee Ownership Ideas Forum at the Capitol, which is a good step in creating um, momentum for using ownership to make the economy work better. And we're super excited that you're going to be coming to the Asp Institute headquarters tomorrow and some on Thursday uh, to get a chance to continue this work. And it really matters that we're here, um, uh, obviously. It sends an incredibly important signal, and it's great to have partners from various offices and staffs and committees taking part in the work, because it's going to take all of us to make this dream become even more real. Um, the, you know, the Aspen Institute founders believed in the aftermath of World War II and the Holocaust and the rise of the Soviet system in around 1950 when they formed us that we needed to have fora and places to engage people from diverse perspectives and sectors and backgrounds and sensibilities so that all those people together could have a values-based and solutions-based dialogue. And that's certainly what this is about, bringing people together in that space where we can create and innovate and move forward together. Um, Aspen is coming up on its 75th anniversary, and um, that idea of bringing people together, which you're animating today, is more relevant, of course, than ever. Um, those ideals are being tested. We know that all across the country and many communities, all across the world, in fact. And um, some of the division comes from the feeling and the lived experience of so many people that the economy just doesn't work for them. There's other drivers too, but that's a big one. Um, if We all know this. If you feel that you can't provide for economic security for your family, for your children especially, for other younger people who rely upon you, for your neighbors and community, um, it, it leaves a feeling of frustration, anger, and alienation that contributes to the toxicity that we're seeing. And so how can we address that? We have to come up with solutions. There are many. This is an important one. Um, it, it is a reality as we sit here today and see what can we do to make employee ownership more possible, learn what works, figure out how to um, shine, a, shine a light on what's already happening and elevate work and voices that can spread this idea successfully. We just have to remember, we have to believe that everyday people are feeling that um, they can't build savings. They're feeling that they're one problem away from a financial disaster. Uh, they're feeling that their kids are exposed to all sorts of social media influences and cyber culture influences that are making other people rich while their kids just get the downside. Um, they're seeing mortgages going through the roof. They're worried about college tuition being unaffordable and unjustifiable. Um, healthcare, food, you know, everything's sort of getting harder and harder. So, um, and a part of that may be, for some, seeing shareholder value increasing while their own wages are flat. It's all part of a, of a, of a sort of holistic story here. So this, you know, what can we do about this? People don't trust government. They don't, they don't trust institutions in general. Um, nonprofits are liked, but nobody trusts us to actually get something done, unfortunately. Uh, and that's, that's you know, we've, we know that. Um, they certainly trust business in some sense more, but big business, you know, um, it depends which survey you read. Uh, people, again, wonder who's representing the interest of the everyday American worker. Um, so now more than ever, what can we do to build actual practical programs and progress that then will have the power of building some trust and generating momentum for new other ideas that together, collectively, like our river's current, can help us move the economy in a direction that's more inclusive and thus the democracy in a direction that's more participatory and more trust-based. Um, and maybe employee ownership can pull this off because it gives people a financial stake in their company's success. It certainly um, op uh, helps communities retain jobs. It can allow retiring owners to see the fruits of their entrepreneurial work play out and live on in next generations. It can be a source of business innovation and of resilience. Um, it can also bring people together outside of politics, trans politics, if you will, or if it's on a spectrum, not just red and blue, but the vast and growing group that's neither red nor blue and doesn't want to be red or blue, wants to be something else. So this is a pretty impressive group of people. It's a critical topic. We've got a great set of partners working together. Rutgers is an enormous intellectual leader in this work. And let's get the job done. Let's learn together and keep pushing forward so that ultimately this work and all the other things that we do in our economy that are about investing in people 
can become the norm, the known norm, not the exception. So thank you so much.